March 6th Board of Trustee meeting to order. Join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. I would ask the board for approval of the agenda. I so move. Is there I a second? second? Please. Okay. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. On the consent agenda, we have one item, the minutes of the February 14th district board meeting. Um, and I would ask for a motion and a second to approve that. I motion to approve the minutes as presented. Thank you. I second it. Thanks, Trustee Wendell. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Um, we do not have public a comment today. Um, as we know, the Board of Trustees encourages the general public to provide comments directly. Um, and as of today, we do not have a comment. So we'll work right into um, our presentations from our guests and represent representatives to the board. Um, we'll start with Shannon McCaslin on our excellence at Ames. Yay, hello, good afternoon, Board of Trustees. Um, before I introduce our student highlight to you today, I wanna thank you for the opportunity to do this during these meetings. Um, I was looking at my files the other day and can report that since we began asking students to share their stories with you back in 2018, it's been that long, Dr. B. Um, I've had the true honor of working uh, with 26 students to get to know them. And so that's pretty cool, yeah. Today is no exception, uh, another rock star. Uh, today I bring number 27 to you, but Lindsay Stevens is not just a number. I knew that when I got the glowing recommendation about her from Professor Amy McFarland. Um, Amy's in our ag department, um, and she met Lindsay uh, probably shortly after Lindsay began at Ames in the fall of 2020. Who does that? She began at Ames in the fall of 2020. Think about that. She had taken some time after graduating from high school and decided in the height of the pandemic to come to Ames. Um, that tells you a lot about her. Um, and what I've learned uh, from getting to know Lindsay is she, she likes to take the complex and make it simple. Uh, and I'm certain that skill has come in quite handy um, as she's navigated college through these uh, through these last several years. Um, you'll see she's graduating um, in May, um, not just with that degree, but with four certificates, intro to animal science, animal science, ag business and agribusiness management. Um, and since this is the month we were going to be in Fort Lupton, um, Trustee Wendell, um, we're usually enjoying this meeting in Fort Lepton. I did want to ask Lindsay to represent for Fort Lepton, being that she's she's there quite a bit of the time um, doing her education. So let's give it up for Lindsay Stevens. Thank you, Dean McCaslin, and thank you, Board of Trustees, for having me today. My journey is far from normal, and I wouldn't have it any other way. I grew up on 310 acres in Pierce, Colorado, where my family and I raised beef cattle for my parents' meat business. And in addition to the cattle, we also grew all of the feed they ate. Agriculture has been a huge part of my life since day one, and it has taught me the value of hard work, dedication, and caring for what God gave you. I was homeschooled for my entire school career and participated in 4-H for nine years. I graduated in 2018, and after a gap year that turned into two, my Ames journey began in August 2020. College was never on my list of priorities. School was hard for me with learning challenges, and overall, I lacked confidence. I always told myself I would never be smart enough to attend college and obtain a degree, but when the pandemic hit and classes moved online, I knew this was my time to give it a shot in a setting I was comfortable with. Two weeks before classes started, I registered, and I had no idea what to major in. With my background, I decided animal science would be a good place to start. I remember doing my research in this program before classes started and looking up my professors. And when I came across Amy McFarland's picture, I thought, she looks nice. I think this may just be all right. And it truly has been more than all right. In my first two classes that semester with Amy, she made me feel like I could conquer anything I set my mind to. And her passion for agriculture fueled my passion for agriculture and solidified my degree path. 
I was shy and scared, but all of that faded away at that moment, and I knew Amy would be with me every step of the way, and she has been. I say it often because it's true. I stayed in school because Amy believed in me when I did not believe in myself, and if I had not his, had her as my teacher, I would have quit. The impact that Amy has had on me in the eight classes I have had with her is invaluable, and the person I am today is largely attributed to her. The two years between high school and starting Ames was one of the best decisions I ever made, and I am thankful for the time and experiences I have had that led me to where I am now. A few things I love about Ames are the small class sizes, the ability to connect with peers in your degree path, the amazing professors that truly care about you and your success, and the resources that are available to help you be successful. Specifically in my program, Megan Blazer is an incredible resource to students. She helps students find internships and job opportunities and reviews resumes and cover letters. Her resources and connections are the reason I was able to find and complete my internship for my degree. I know as a student and beyond, the staff and teachers in my program will be there to support me and help me along the way as I enter my career. Another reason I love Ames is the opportunity to participate in student clubs. For me personally, the Ames Agriculture Club has given me an amazing opportunity to connect with peers as well as opportunities to talk with leaders in our industry and learn more about opportunities outside of the classroom. The trips we take as a club to judging competitions and field trips to local businesses in the ag industry provide wonderful opportunities for club members to network with businesses in the industry, and it also provides a way to explore new things that you may not have been interested in before but are after seeing it. Personally, the Ames Ag Club gives me the opportunity to practice what I have learned in the classroom, and it helps to raise up the next generation of agricultural professionals and leaders. In my time at Ames, I have found my home in the agriculture department. It is an industry I know I am passionate about, and helping people understand the complexity of agriculture is one of my favorite things. The classes I have taken in my program have prepared me to enter the workforce, and the internship program gave me the opportunity to explore a career in large animal veterinary medicine. While I will not be continuing the veterinary medicine road, that internship allowed me to pursue a lifelong dream and led me to what I want to pursue as a career after graduation. After graduation, I will pursue a career in large animal or in agriculture communication and education. My passion is taking complex, controversial issues in our industry and making them simple to understand and helping children that have no relation to agriculture learn about our industry and teach them where their food comes from. Another passion of mine is seeing where we as an industry are lacking and could improve. As one of the largest industries in the world, people have questions, and I want to be there to answer those questions. My journey has had highs, and it's had lows, and it's had days when I wanted to give up and just start my career like everyone else my age, but I am so glad that I chose to stick with it and am forever grateful to those who have invested in me throughout my academic career. I will forever value my time at Ames because it gave me the opportunity to prove myself wrong and show myself that I am smart enough to obtain a college degree. The Lord put so many incredible people in my life and my time at Ames that have truly shaped who I am today, and I will always be grateful to each and every one of those people. Tammy Schneider and Amy McFarland are why the agriculture program is what it is today, and I hope many other students are able to find their passion as I did and find their home in the ag department. My journey has not been the average college path, but I have found that your path does not have to follow the average in order to chase your dreams, be successful, and find your passion. Thank you. Lindsay, I want to thank you for sharing your story of your journey and what it has meant to you to work with our outstanding advisors and faculty members. Uh, and I know I speak for all of the, the board members when I say this is one of my favorite parts of our agenda. And it reaffirms for all of us that what we're doing is working. And uh, hearing your story, I have no doubt that you will be a leader in your industry, in in your career, uh, wherever it is. If it's Colorado or someplace else, uh, I just appreciate you sharing the story of your journey here at Ames. So congratulations. And this is just a small token of our appreciation for you sharing that story and motivating us all to continue to do what we do. Best of luck in your career.
Thank you. Thank you. I agree, Jean. Uh, one of the best parts of our entire agenda. And on to the next part of our energy. Um, we'll start with Jared Polito with our Student Government Association. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, distinguished members of the board, cabinet members, Chair Shock and Dr. Bornstein. I appreciate being able to share this time with you. Student life's been busy at work. Uh, just last week, I myself had the opportunity to attend a special Veterans Roundtable meet and greet with the Secretary of Veteran Affairs at CSU. We were able to discuss super important issues for student veterans, such as the GI Bill, the VA healthcare system, and a program called Veterans Readiness and Employment. It's kind of like an extension to the GI Bill. Uh, it was it was really cool to see other student veterans from other college campuses hear their issues, to be able to bring them back to Ames to address the issues that our student veterans have. I've also been collaborating with John DeShant uh, to enhance just veteran engagement and support on campus. Recently, we were reached out by the CDI to coordinate and collaborate on a special breakfast commencement celebration specifically for veterans and military affiliated students. Uh, it'll be a wonderful opportunity really just to contribute and honor the veteran students. Aside from that, we're also really announced to, we're really announced to, uh, thrilled to announce the completion of a project that's started by our very own SGA member, Daniel Irwin, the Ames Little Book of Recovery. Uh, you should each have a signed copy of Front of You, but I would also like to formally invite you to the book's launch party, which will be April 8th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. in the student commons. But with that said, can we please get a great round of applause for Daniel Irwin for working on this two-year project? Thank you all. But in addition to that awesome news, CAP has some exciting events coming up this month. They're hosting a de-stressing session with therapy dogs, and that'll be March 19th from 10.30 a.m. to 12 p.m. in the Student Commons, room 114. Uh, there will be vision boards, dog therapy, stress balls, all to help students unwind, and this is right around midterm, so it really does help. Additionally, uh, in honor of Women's History Month, we're thrilled to present All Things Equal, The Life and Trials of Ruth Bader Ginsburg on March 22nd from 7.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m., which will be at the Union Colony Civic Center. All students are welcome, uh, and they may request tickets, but while supplies last. Uh, but on that note, thank you for your time, and do I have any questions? Dr. Bornstein? Chair Shock, thank you. I have a question. Mm -hmm. The Veterans Celebration Week breakfast, when is do we know a date and a time and a location or at least uh, a day and a time? Or So currently there is no set date and time that I know me and John are still. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Trustee Hankley. Uh, the therapy dog program. What group are you doing that with, please? Uh, right off. I don't have the group off the top of my head, but I could get that to you and we could reach that out and. I could either send that to Jerry and then he can send that out to you. Okay, thank you. Oh, oh so the Campus Activity Board is putting that on. I did, I, no, I meant the, the dog component of it. I mean, is it Havoc from CSU or is it from Cheyenne or where are the dogs coming from? So that I will get with our Campus Activity Programming Board and I will send that to Jerry and he will get that to you. <laughs> So it's a local organization that's national. <laughs> and I will get you the details to that. Great. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions, Trustee Wendell? What was, what was the date of the little book reveal? So the date of the launch party will be April 8th April. from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. in the student conference. Thank you. 
Any other questions or comments? Okay. Thanks, Jared. Thank you so much. Okay, next up we have our Ames Faculty Association with Julia Weingart. Hello, everyone. Chair Schock, members of the board, and Dr. Bornstein, friends and colleagues, good afternoon. It is such a pleasure to be here, and it's also a pleasure to have Trustee Haithley and Trustee Truswell. It's nice to have you a part of the board. Today, we're gonna to be looking at three primary components today of our faculty accomplishments. We're gonna be looking at community involvement, training and professional development, and then of course, ripples. All right, so there is no power for change greater than the community discovering what it cares about. And when I think about community involvement, this quote rings true to me. Community involvement is meaningful. It's consistent participation in activities that support and improve our social well-being. At Ames Community College, we value community, authenticity, equity, just to name a few of our values. So without further ado, let's take a look at how our incredible faculty are contributing to our values. Part-time instructor Jill Scott gave a guest lecture to the Introduction Anthropology class on January 31st, 2024. Now the guest lecture was sharing her research about the homonym species Homo naledi. In 2013, a bounty of fossils was discovered deep within an African cave, and they were identified as a new species with a surprising combination of features. Human evolution expert Professor Chris Stinger outlined some of the mysteries and contradictions presented by the Homo naledi and the fascinating possibilities it raises. So the work that Jill Scott is doing will add value to our college and our students. Since August the 1st, 2023, part-time Riders Community Coach Jeff Moser has been serving as the state's vice president of the Colorado Association of parliamentarians. Now, among his duties is to serve as chair of the committee for the state association and to overall see the association's annual summer institute of educational workshops. Now, what I think is so beneficial about this is that Jeff is going to be able to bring some of his knowledge again back to the college and his students, because being a member of the Colorado Association of Parliamentarians is going to help you gain necessary skills that benefit you both personally and professionally. And who doesn't want some of those? OK, so some of these in skills include confidence, persuasive speaking, respect, good listening and effective leadership. It sounds like an association I might sign up for after this speech. Next, it live as if you are going to die tomorrow. Learn as if you are going to live forever. Mahatma Gandhi. We're looking now at training and professional development. And I'm going to highlight our outstanding and most excellent professor of English, Allison Easley. I've known Allison for about 14 years as we taught together as adjuncts at Ames Community College. And I was always incredibly impressed with Allison Easley. She is a natural born leader and she has shown her expertise to our department and our college over and over again. In fact, she was elected the assistant chair of a two year college English Association Southwest organization 2023 to 2026. So I really want to congratulate Allison Easley. Finally, everyone, we are there. We are at awards and ripples. And I am so excited to share what some of our wonderful faculty, how they're impacting our students and our college. So what I strive for is that everywhere I go, I leave a positive impact. This is by Clarence Seedorf, and I might as well have written that quote because I align with him as well. Francie Rattoni, our professor of psychology, was nominated for a ripple. And this probably isn't surprising because you probably have already heard about Francie Rattoni. She is one of our superstars at Ames. Francie is a great professor, and I got the chance to take my first course with her this semester. She is very well put together, organized, and has great structure. She carries a lot of knowledge, and she is very kind. I never thought I would ever get the chance to take a death and dying course, but I'm a lot more comfortable now that I took it from Francie. 
Not only does her course prepare you for death, it prepares you for a UNC showcase that I have never had the chance to do in any of my other courses. I have never had a connection with a professor until I met Francie and her husband. So yes, the next ripple is for Jeremy Rattoni. <laughs> Jeremy is an instructor of psychology and was nominated by Denise Prado as well. I have always felt comfortable and confident in any class that I have taken with Jeremy. I have never struggled to understand concepts in his courses, and he is always kind and as helpful as possible. He is not only kind, but he is selfish and he is intelligent. And this is one award that I think a teacher deserves more than anyone would be would be would be uh, Jeremy. He has changed my life and my career in many ways, and I'm so sad that I won't have a chance to take another class that he teaches. Moving on to Stacy Johnson, who is another superstar at Ames. She is an English professor, and she was also nominated for a Ripple. Professor Johnson is one of the most knowledgeable, passionate, and caring professors. Are you all seeing a trend or a pattern here? I have encountered at Ames. I've never been a I've never been a student who has opened up to professors about personal struggles as academics has always been the main focus of my interactions. However, in the fall of 2020-23, I was going through one of the most difficult periods in my life. And we all know what this is like to be able to have to go through. We're working multiple jobs. We have families. We have interests. And it can be a lot to juggle. So this student considered withdrawing completely from college. But when they turned to Professor Johnson and confided how they were feeling, she offered unwavering support and, and kindness. She felt comfortable telling about the struggles, Stacy about the struggles in the semester, and Stacy helped her brainstorm solutions. So it's clear that Professor Johnson is a great asset to Ames and our students. And finally, for the last superstar ripple today for Ames is Stephanie Newton, Professor of Art. I just wanted to thank Professor Newton for changing my perspective on art history. Going to school and seeing that I was required to take an art history class, well, I was not excited at all. But I did see the importance or relevance of my degree. And after taking Professor Newton's class, I can confidently say that I was wrong. Due to Dr. Newton's passion for teaching, I was amazed and inspired, and now I have a passion for art myself. So we have looked at community involvement. We looked at training opportunities, and we also looked at ripples today to showcase what our amazing faculty are doing here at Ames. Thus ends the presentation for the March meeting for AFA. Any questions? Any questions or comments? Thank you, Julia. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Okay, next we have Ross Perkins with our AIMS Staff Association. Good afternoon, everyone. Chair Shock, Board of Trustees, Dr. B, colleagues. Once again, it's an honor to be up here. Um, short turnaround, but uh, ASA has been a little bit busy. Uh, we're still working on a lot of things that we have planned coming on after spring break. Uh, and so we are, I'll be holding off on those, but a little, you know, teaser. Um, first, I want to just start by recognizing uh, Karen Hankey. Uh, Karen was staff associate at uh, Loveland campus. She retired last week. Uh, and she was part of the AIM staff association. She was the Loveland rep. Uh, so she will be missed and uh, got an opportunity to have a nice talk with her before she left. So um, just enjoyed having her and her history and knowledge of uh, being at AIMS for many years uh, and things like that. So I just want to give a shout out to her and her service to AIMS. Um, so we are looking for a new rep. So once they get that, we will have a new uh, Loveland rep for ASA. Uh, I want to also uh, thank uh, Melody Edge and Erica Lovato from the TRIO program. They were our guest speakers at the last ASA meeting. They talked about the TRIO program and how it supports students. And so we had a lot of good questions, a good Q&A with them uh, about kind of how that program works and how folks that are not involved in that program can get students and uh, nominate students and things like that. And so that was very insightful. And that's kind of been the theme that we've been doing for this year is 
how we can support our students at ASA. And so that's one of the areas that we had. And that was very interesting because I wasn't very familiar with TRIO and really what TRIO means and stuff like that. So um, one of the big discussions we had at our last uh, ASA meeting was about artificial intelligence. That's coming off the heels of our conversation day. Uh, it was a great conversation. A lot of folks just getting introduced to what artificial intelligence was and uh, kind of a little scared, a little nervous, but uh, we had a really good discussion, caught a lot of good information, and I'm working with a, uh, a task uh, team right now to try to put together some ideas for AIMS and stuff like that for staff and stuff. So I'm really looking forward to that. We've got a lot of good input. Folks were going on and uh, checking out ChatGBT and BARD and a few of those other ones and stuff like that. Uh, another discussion we had uh, at ASA was concerning the College for Kids scholarship. So historically, that scholarship has been for uh, children of staff members. Um, and so we we had a conversation with uh, College for Kids and uh, with the ASA folks, and we are going to sort of expand that out to uh, maybe grand grandchildren and nieces of uh, AIMS staff. So we're going to kind of expand that a little bit to create some of those opportunities to uh, not not everybody has kids, and so we want to make sure that they have those opportunities too and stuff. So we're working with the foundation to uh, to do that. So we're super excited about that. Um, the uh, the ripples this week were awesome. A little short this week, a little thin, but that was because of the short turnaround. I suspect next one will be uh, a little bit more. But there's you know like Julia said, just a, such a lot of great information. And so once again, I always encourage you and those out there to read those ripples. Uh, they're just so uh, insightful to all the incredible things that folks are doing here at Ames. Um, and the last thing I want to just kind of throw out there is just a sort of a Windsor campus uh, shout out to the Ames eatery that's out there in the gateway. Uh, that has made a huge impact, uh, not only for our faculty and staff out there to have warm food and food available on a regular, you know, every day and stuff like that, but also for our students to be able to have uh, a place to go have lunch, be able to get a hamburger and things like that. It's made a huge impact on um, the community out there that we're trying to build and stuff like that. So I just want to give a big shout out to that uh, because it is definitely having a positive impact. That's all I had to share with you. I look forward to next month. Uh, if you have any questions, I am here to answer. Any questions nope. or comments? Okay. Great. Thank you very Thanks, much. Ross. Have a wonderful spring day. Dr. Bornstein. Thank you, Chair Shock. I have a response for Trustee Hayfley's question regarding the Comfort Dog group. It's the Lutheran Church Charities Canine Comfort Dog Ministry that we are utilizing. Thank you, Janet Chase. Thank you. Okay, we'll move into our action items for today. The first one is our AIM Student Health and Wellness Center. Dr. Larry Pukowski and Dr. Russ Ruthmer. Dear Sean, Go ahead. I, I would like to uh, comment before we get into the discussion here, because I have a conflict of interest, but I want to participate in the discussion and questions because I'm a strong proponent of this uh, project, uh, but I do serve on the Sunrise Health Board of Directors, so I will recuse myself from the vote, but I would like to partic participate in the discussion. Thank you, Trustee O'Hara. And I too have a conflict of interest, potential conflict of interest as I sit on the Sunrise um, Board of Directors as well. And so I will recuse myself from a vote as well. Dr. Pukowski. Chair Shock, fellow trustees, Dr. B, administrators, faculty, staff, and guests. We bring to you first action item 7A, the AIMS Student Health and Wellness Center. An on-campus student health and wellness center would provide access to primary health care for students and their immediate family members. Given the significant overlap between primary care and mental health care, a facility co-locating co both services would remove barriers to access for our students. The fiscal impact of this action would be approximately $18.4 million dollars spread across fiscal years 25, 26, and 27. The administrative recommendation for this action is to approve the building of an AIMS Student Health and Wellness Center. 
Great, thank you. Any further question, discussion? I know we had a presentation um, again this morning for in our work session. Okay, if not, I'd entertain a motion to approve action item 7A, the Ames Student Health and Wellness Center. I'd like to make a motion to approve this recommendation. Thank you, Trustee Treswell. And I second this motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Sir, whoops, excuse me. I recuse myself. <laughs> Please note in the record that yeah. Trustee O'Hara and Trustee Shock both um, recuse themselves from the vote. Yeah, ayes have it. Thank you. And items, action item 7B, the resolution authorizing negotiation with Sunrise Community Health, Dr. Rothmer. Thank you, Chair Shock. Uh, members of the board, I'm honored to bring to you I action item 7B. And that item is a resolution authorizing negotiation with Sunrise Community Health. The summary of the issue is to uh, negotiate an MOU with Sunrise Community Health to provide primary care and dental services in the Ames Student Health and Wellness Center. Um, the financial impact is dependent upon that negotiations with the provider and that information was also included in your two work sessions of uh, the, the costs of running this uh, center. The administrative recommendation is for asking for the board to approve the resolution authorizing negotiation with Sunrise Community Health to provide primary care and dental services in the Ames Student Health and Wellness Center. Are there any questions or comments? Trustee Hafley? You know, Ames is really lucky with the wide variety of allies and partners that we have. And I'm, we need to count our blessings for that. And so for Sunrise and Ms. Moran to step up and take care of all of these things for the health scarcity that our students and staff have is admirable and should be lauded. And we're delighted that, that you assist us as well as all of our other partners. So thank you very much. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? If not, I'd entertain a motion to approve action item 7B, the resolution authorizing negotiation with Sunrise Community Health. So move to approve action item 7B. Thank you, Trustee Wendell. May I have a second? I second that motion. Thank you, Trustee Trustwell. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Let the record show we have the three who approved and trustee o'hare and trustee shock recuse themselves from the vote so i love what sunrise does i love what ames does i love what i get to do but when we do it together it is so much better thank you thank you so much for this thank you It's always so exciting in here. Okay, we have information items. Jerry, would you like to walk us through those? Yes, thank you, Chair Shock. Uh, the first uh, item that I'll walk through is the upcoming board events. Um, you'll note in your packet, we have the calendar there. I won't go through all of them, but I'll highlight a couple. Uh, one of them is uh, one that actually didn't make it in um, to the packet. It came in just after publishing. Uh, Ag Day down at the Fort Lupton campus is going to be on March 19th from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Um, I sent that out in your board updates email last week, and I'll send it out again this week, so let me know if you can attend that. Um, the Success Foundation Breakfast uh, noted here, uh, Chair Shock and uh, Trustee O'Hara will be attending that. And the uh, Do Tell event, uh, Trustee O'Hara will be attending that event. Uh, we have tickets for you there. Next, uh, I will walk through uh, the upcoming items for the April board meeting. Uh, that board meeting again will be down in Fort Lupton. Um, we have for the work session, a review of the proposed tax info and proposed budget from Chuck Jensen. 
We have uh, action item compensation and benefits plan um, that D. Schultz presented this morning in the work session. We'll be there for action uh, next month. And then action on the Distinguished Fellow Award uh, will also take place uh, next month down in Fort Lupton. Uh, do I have any questions? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Any other comments? Trustee Lindell, let's see. I think I forgot to tell you, I will be at the honor ceremony um, luncheon. Okay. Commencement, of course. Oh, and I'll be at Amos Day for sure. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Great. Any further comments? Great. Thank you, Jerry. Okay, our next item up is our foundation board liaison, Trustee John Hafley. Unmute, just like Zoom. Um, you know, I don't think that Ames recognizes the fact that our development officers, uh, Ms. Jackson and, and Ms. Wagner do an incredible job. And one of the things that's occurred since there's two of them is that they've collaborated with one another to be able to maximize reaching out to partners, creating uh, visits and attending events. And, you know, it's been said that you need to have seven contacts prior to before you can make an ask. And since January, they've been out over 30 times working with individual contacts, and they've been out 30 times at a variety of events. And what's exciting for all of us should be that they are recognized within the community as the Ames Foundation, and it makes it much easier for them to be able to go out and do their jobs successfully. So, you know, they're there, they're maximizing it, and they're doing a great job on behalf of, of all of us. Uh, several things that have occurred during the course of the last year is that the goal was to have 50 new donors, and to date, there are 142 new donors. Um, we wanted to be... Okay. Um, the idea that we're going to increase the level of the donations uh, up to 75 people. We're currently at 41 year to date, and they have great faith that they will attain their goal. So congratulations to them on that. Uh, you know, to date, there's been $584,448 raised. And what's really exciting is in two weeks, there will be a $2 million gift from Roberta, Roberta and Carol Miller, and they will be working on that contract. And so that is really, really exciting that they've developed that relationship and those people have such a passion for our institution. And we need to make sure that, that we thank them for their incredible efforts on all two and a half million dollars. So thanks to all of you for that. Um, you know, the it's very interesting because all of the board of directors as well as the foundation uh, development folks, they really want to work with programs. And sometimes programs are apprehensive about reaching out and talking to them. And anybody within underneath your leadership, I hope that you put in your notes to your departments that it's important that they reach out to Ms. Jordan and Ms. Jackson so that we can work, so they can work with them in a positive manner. Examples that are coming up on the 13th of July, we're gonna have an automotive car show in Greeley. On Aviation Day, and this is really a big one, it's 914, and the ultimate goal for that is going to be $100,000 on that day alone. Um, the music department, and I don't know, Ms. Jackson, you can help me. Is it really the Santana group that is coming or is it fake Santana? Close your eyes and you'll think it's the real team. 
Okay, you can do whatever you want in the audience. Close your eyes, dream big dreams. Um, and then the CDL department, you know, most of the people come to our program and they have sponsorship by their businesses and they pay for everything. The ultimate goal for the foundation is to go out and raise enough money that anybody who doesn't have a scholarship they will have a scholarship to be part of that program since there is such a need for co cross country drivers. And so that is incredible, important, incredibly important. Uh, the pantry, and I think this is really, oh, wait, I got to go back. Uh, I forgot on the big rigs, and I didn't know we had big rigs, uh, but they're going to be able to put the names of any of the sponsors. So as people are driving up and they, they see, our trailers, they're gonna see the names of the people who are help sponsoring those scholarships. So that's really an exciting thing. And it's a great way for those people to show how they're advocates for AIMS as well as uh, philanthropically involved. And the same thing will go for Artie's Pantry. Uh, we're looking currently for a lead donation that they will be part of that truck that goes up US 34, up and down US 34 every day. And we want that wrapped and have those people uh, on uh, that trailer as well. And so it's, you know, you look at all the things that have accomplished and we only have two people essentially in that department. But the reason we're successful is because of everybody who's sitting in this room. And it's not just them, because when you go to the grocery store and you brag about what Ames does and how they do it, that that's what makes Ms. Jackson and Ms. Wagner's jobs much easier. So to the foundation, on behalf of the board, we would like to thank you, and we look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you, Trustee Hayfley. Any questions? It's great work. Thank you. Okay, next up, we have our CEO President's Report with Dr. Bornstein. Um, before we begin that, um, was there any questions regarding any of the information in the packet that you want to pull forward? Okay. I'll turn it over to you. Okay, thank you. I got another text. Uh, the veterans breakfast, uh, also, I guess that will be also the coining ceremony during celebration week will be Tuesday, May 7th from nine to 11. And that will be added to the calendar of events. Um, just to also let you know, um, there'll probably be a few more events that we're not aware of right now with dates and times for celebration week. And certainly um, Jerry's weekly event email just kind of keep track of that and as soon as we know we'll let you know but as time gets closer that week gets full of other areas nursing pinnings other pinnings other celebrations etc cetera, etc cetera. so we'll just let you know as we know um, since there aren't any questions on specific highlights from the um, agenda i would like to ask uh, dr ayler to come up uh, and just give you an information a little bit of information on a policy um, 620 that will be repealed uh, due to um, legislation so dr ayler, oh you're already there thank you good afternoon chair shock uh, board dr bornstein cabinet guests um, Policy 620 has to do with uh, required selective service registration before students can enroll at Ames. Um, that we've had a change in legislation, and so this is no longer required. So we will be repealing this and uh, no longer have this as a requirement for students. Any questions? Questions or comments? Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Neal. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Quick question. Um, still under the president's report, um, you will notice the president's meetings of note from February 
We have a very excited looking trusty Hayfley dropping the puck at the Eagles game. We also have a very cheery trusty Trustwell and her husband, uh, Janet Chase with a crazy hat. We have the Southeast Weld County Chamber annual banquet, and we have a picture of the entire ballroom from Conversation Day. And I don't know if you have any questions on anything specific uh, regarding the meetings of note. If not, I will move on to, um, do we have any supervisors in the audience that want to introduce their new employee? It doesn't look like we do. So that concludes the president's report, Chair Shock. Great, thank you. Just checking, make sure there's no other questions. Okay, we'll move on to the reflections and comment um, about AIMS. And if you have any qu comments regarding AIMS or any future topics. Trustee Wendell. Um, once again, I'd just like to say thank you, everyone, for doing a magnificent job. Um, the fact that today you were able to add something so beneficial to this campus that's in our mission, mission vision um, statements as far as some more supportive services to the students and their families, just extremely exciting. Um, everyone has worked really diligent on that. Um, I would like to quickly do a quick shout out to Amy McFarland because she has, through the time I've been here, she's touched so many lives of students. And it seems like those students may not have wanted to stay in Ames or in their classwork, um, but it's through Amy's um, due diligence and her caring for individuals that I think have really kept that program going and the popularity is improving and um, she's a bright light in the Fort Lupton campus. So I want to appreciate that and I look forward to going to Ag Day. Thank you. Any other comments? Rusty O'Hare. I would just like to add my comments uh, on congratulating the faculty not only on the, the high quality education they provide, but the story we heard today about building confidence in students uh, coming or feeling that they didn't have an opportunity, first of all, for an education, but then feeling the confidence that I can do this and I can even go on beyond AIMS and continue that success. That, that's really outstanding on the part of the faculty uh, to achieve the, that kind of uh, student success. And I hear that story over and over again. So uh, congratulations to our outstanding faculty. Any other comments? I would just echo, I, I think when we hear the stories, it goes so much beyond the material piece, it goes to the people piece, and that's you guys um, in the cabinet, faculty, staff. Um, you guys all play such a huge role, so thank you for what you do every day. Okay, next is we have our assessment of our board meeting, and you can see the assessment question, so approach it a little bit differently today. Um, does anyone have any responses to the questions or anything they'd like to share in um, the assessment of our board meeting and um, what we've done today? Okay, seeing none, hearing none. I think we're good with that one. So are there any other comments or anything before we adjourn? So I'd ask for a motion to adjourn. Be so moved. Thank you, Trustee O'Hare. Second. Thank you, Trustee Trustwell. It's a mouthful. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Very good. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>